Okay, so it is after you returned from Dubai that you set up this committee, or the committee was already in place? The committee was set up. Mm -hmm. It is the outcome of the committee's report that sent us to Dubai, because mm -hmm. one of the recommendations was to renegotiate the agreement. So that is why the minister sent us. So has the agreement been renegotiated? No, as I said, the outcome was not quite satisfactory mm -hmm. the way we wanted it. So it has not been renegotiated. Because for us, what would be a satisfactory outcome would be for Ameri to give up some of the almost 200 million that it is pocketing for doing nothing. You are suggesting that if you look at the itemized um, situation for the contract, there's a 200 million that does nothing. Almost. There they is, don't first of all, into it. First of all, there is a 150 million. Mm -hmm. Because the 510 million, that is a contract price. Mm -hmm. Then they subcontracted it to PPR for 360 million. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's 150 million mm -hmm. out of the 510. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, in the agreement, there are variable charges which have been put in the agreement at $16.6 .6 million. Now, I question this, both here in Ghana and at Dubai. Both places, the answer was that it was a mistake. Mm. Yes, it's a mistake, but it's in the contract, $16.6 .6 million. Now, the reason why it struck me was I was wondering how a variable charge could have a fixed sum. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yes. Now, I'm What was it supposed to vary upon? Is it... Mm -hmm. Petroleum prices, is it price um, of water? All kinds of things, yes, filters that they change, you know, every day. Yeah, changes. but they had a fixed price. They had put in a fixed price in the agreement. Mm. Now I'm advised that the maximum, even at maximum production, because it should be in around 8 million. Mm. But in the agreement, it's 16.6 .6 million. When I asked, because members of our committee were composed of people who actually were involved in the original negotiations mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. They said it was a mistake. In Dubai, I asked the Mary, and they said it's a mistake. And I said, you had an addendum. You didn't correct this. You left it. But that so, has been paid? Some of it has been paid? Yes, mm -hmm. it's been paid. So what solution? And now there is absolutely no need for these variable charges because it is taken care of in the 360 million. And it is not Ameri that is performing the contract. So what is the variable charge for? The subcontractors are performing the contract. Exactly. Why did you not invite Dr. Kamran Donko to take evidence from him at the committee level? No, we were not doing this. We are looking at the agreement as a legal document, and so we can make recommendations. So there was no need, this is not a court, to invite somebody to take evidence from him. There was absolutely no need for that. But you invited some people? No. Nobody was invited. You, you spoke to the Ameri Ameri people. Nobody was invited. Mm. The committee session, we just sat there, 17 man committee, and brainstormed. Mm. Nobody was invited to come and give evidence. No. Did you say that the con contract was fraudulent? Did yes. the report say that? Yes, it did. That is fraudulent? Yes. But that's a big word to use. Yes, it is. But and if. You are not a court. If you. You're a committee, you're not a court. Oh, yes, but even as a lawyer. Mm. If I'm doing a statement of claim, making a claim on behalf of my client, I'm entitled to say that the contract is fraudulent. That doesn't mean that it's been established. But in my legal opinion, it is fraudulent. I'm allowed to say that. So why are you saying it's fraudulent? Where's the fraud? Well, you should see the contract. There is nothing in that contract that tells you that it will be performed by a third party. All the warranties and guarantees were given by Ameri. Mm. Now, it turns out that this is a company that has no idea, no expertise, no history of power projects. So how did they enter into this kind of agreement and making all the warranties and guarantees that they did in the agreement? On what basis? So the fraud is perpetrated allegedly by Mary itself? Yes. Now, if you make statements by which another party is induced, and it turns out that those statements are false. What is it? They are fraudulent representation. And by those inducements, they entered into a contract for $510 million. When you arrived at this conclusion of fraud, why didn't you recommend to the minister that let's just cancel this contract? Well, it's the alternative. We thought that we have come far. PPR is operating the plant. So that let's take first the soft approach to renegotiate. 
because they themselves have already expressed that willingness to renegotiate, failing which then we terminate. So there's also a recommendation for termination in the event that the renegotiation fails. But that's what Vicky was telling us, that in, in, in the event of termination, we have a lot of money to pay. It will cost more to terminate than to renegotiate. Well, those are when there is a default on the part of uh, the Ghana government. Mm -hmm. But clearly, if we are to go to court on grounds of fraudulent misrepresentation, then those things will not apply. Those penalties will not apply.